Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Frank Rosario, as uh, Gabby said. Uh, Gabby, is it okay if I walk around? Please. I don't want to make that's any great. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good. Um, so my name is Frank Rosario, and uh, I'm an artist, and I uh, I'll work mostly. I make sculpture mostly uh, for the past few years um, uh, using wood and metal. Um, I do welding. Uh, I do a lot of welding with my work. Uh, I have a studio uh, here in uh, North Brentwood, um, and uh, I share this space with my partner. She does ceramics. So we do uh, wood, metal, and ceramics here in this warehouse. And uh, I feel really lucky that we get to come to our shop. Uh, uh, you know, because we're both here a lot, uh, along with Rosie, my dog, who's around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so if, if, if it's okay, I'll just tell you briefly. Um, uh, I, uh, I've been living in the DC area for, uh, for a very long time, like 40 years, 40 years, very long time. And uh, so I've seen a lot of change, been here a long time. Um, and uh, I was a working photographer for about 15 years. Uh, I did news work and documentary work here and in New York and kind of, you know, did that, that was my job. Um, and then somewhere along the line there, I had kids and things kind of changed. My schedule changed, my, my ability to um, travel changed. So I kind of just settled down and started making work at home. And, and uh, through that, you know, uh, sort of developed my interest in, uh, in uh, printmaking. I've done some printmaking. Um, and uh, that, you know, working with wood as a material started to learn a lot more about wood and uh, got into some furniture making. And then, which I still do, I still make tables and benches and, and chairs. Uh, I do commission work. Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I'm interested in you know, developing my, my skills with sculpture. Um, and I guess mostly, you know, I work kind of work on abstract work, I think. Um, I can let me see if I can flip this thing around. I'll just show you guys around a little. Uh, so uh, I'm we're right here on Route One, and uh, we're lucky enough to get this space. North Brentwood has been you know, you know very supportive of us uh, getting into the space. So uh, this is woodshop, uh, and I make all sorts of things here. Uh, currently, I'm working with some pieces with some skateboards that uh, a friend of mine gave me, and I'm uh, making some. Um, I don't know, just kind of putting them on the lathe and seeing what I can do with them. Uh, this is a project that I did a while ago. My family, my family's from El Salvador. Uh, my mom was an immigrant, came here, I think, in, in the late 60s. And uh, in El Salvador, my family are bakers. Um, they make candy and uh, bake uh, uh, bread for uh, like 100 years. Um, so as a kid, I went to El Salvador a lot in the 70s and in the 80s. Uh, which was during the time of the war and and a lot going on uh but i think you know, you know being around sort of people making things um and using their hands and a lot just kind of working with whatever materials they had um just kind of you know working with some limitations uh really sort of you know, got me thinking about about you know making in that way these are like i said my family were bakers so these are i made a, a dozen uh, wooden donuts uh, some years ago and uh, you know these are segmented donuts and they're um, there are 144 pieces for each one and then they're carved and dyed and uh, shaped in different ways and these were in the show at the Strathmore uh, mm -hmm. the timber show um, so in this part of my shop I uh, I do lots of different kinds of woodwork and this this is this is uh, that skateboard. The skateboards became this. I compressed them and I decided nice. to turn this sort of this round vessel here. Uh, and I I'm love really how the trying colors to are it. the colors are, are still retained and it's but it's still got that worn out vibe. It's I, yeah, I yeah. really have appreciated also just skateboard designs and being able to recycle that because they get pretty beat up. For sure, for sure. My friend that gave them to me, he uh I mean, he, you know, he, he gave me boards and, uh, you know, I guess he breaks a lot of boards um, <laughs> and he was kind enough to, to gift them to me. 
Um, so what I, you know, I just glue them, I cut them and glue them and compress them. And, you know, this is sort of like a cutout of, mm -hmm. of the big chunk. And then I chuck that big chunk of wood on the lathe. Um, the lathe is over here. And then, you know, start cutting, cutting away at it with the gouges. I've been making, um, I make bowls and cutting boards and that kind of thing for work. And I got on this thing where I've been making a lot of door stops. I think I, I find a shape that I like to, you know, sort of like kind of work with and I just kind of they make look like it trees. I like trees. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They look like chess pieces or trees. Right. These are different kinds of woods. Um, so, yeah, so I make, uh, you know, lots of different, you know, kinds of vessels, a lot of vessels in here. Uh, and so then over here, I'll show you guys the rest of the shop here. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, like I said, my partner does ceramics, so there are folks in here. Oh, there's Rosie. Oh, hi, Rosie. Uh, hi, Rose. <laughs> uh, she, that's like, she sleeps. She's a great shop dog. She's the best. Really. Uh, so that's my partner, Katie. She's uh, working on, she makes lots of different stuff. Um, and so you collaborate together a lot, right? Because um, I think your your shop is, um, you've titled it Material Things, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's called Material Things. Um, we, uh, so, we started... Oh, sorry, go, ahead. go ahead. I, I was just going to ask, um, you know, so when you're collaborating together, do you find that you're mostly collaborating on artistic ventures or are you working for commissions? And um, not that those aren't artistic, but something that's more client driven. Yeah, so it's kind of, it kind of depends, sorry. It kind of depends. Mostly it's commission work. Um, when we first started working together, we were working on a project to make an award. I'm going to stop moving around. I'm seeing a message that I'm making folks busy. Um, I'm going to, we worked on a project making an award uh, that had to do with world hunger. It was a, for a, some kind of thing around uh, food policy. And so the idea was to make bowls. So she made ceramic bowls and I make wooden bowls and then we kind of join them together uh, to make a bunch of these awards. And that's how we started working together. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for, for collaboration with, um, with, I mean, with all the materials we use really. Right now, one of the things that uh, we're trying to develop right now, you know, during the pandemic, it's, it's, it's weird, it's strange. It's weird for everybody. And, uh, but in a way, it's an opportunity for us to just kind of try to develop some some ideas that uh, we've kind of been, you know, we've been we've been talking about doing some things, but usually we're so busy that we don't get to play a whole lot. Uh, mm -hmm. And now that you know we're stuck in the shop, we have a little more time. So we're working on some mobiles. Um, so I'm welding some uh, sort of large sort of metal frames that will hang. Um, there's one over there. I'll, sh I'll show it to you guys in a sec. And then Katie's going to, you know, uh, throw some pieces um, and we'll figure out, you know, what works. Yeah. Uh, we might use some wood in them. So it's an opportunity. So we're always, you know, sort of throwing ideas back and forth. Um, and I've got um, some, uh, if I can, I'll share my screen now um, so that I can share some of uh, the images that you have, you've uh, provided with everyone, um, as well as um, some videos too. So um, here are just some of those metal, metal works that you're talking about, um, but there are also these awesome videos gotcha. of of the mobiles and how you're creating these metal structures and how they move. Um, I think there's another one. There we go. Here's another one in movement as well. This one, I really love the form and the curves. Thanks. It, it, it feels very, this might be a stretch, but I mean, everything is subjective, right? It, it feels very motherly in a sense. I know that's wow. made strange wow. work to use, but it feels, um, I think I respond to those shapes almost like, like a Venus figure. Um, I love you know, it. 
Yeah. So it, it, it I, I think I, res I just really respond to the, the, the angle of the curvature. I don't know the proper geometric term for that, but, but that particular curve, um, I think is really nice. I think there's also an image you provided of that. Um, but you can see a few others that you all did as well. Um, and how did you uh, begin to work with um, these thin rods? Uh, because they're, they're very, it's interesting because, and I, I kind of want to get to this, when you told me that you also had experience in woodcuts, I think so much about um, the line and creating the line with your woodcuts. And that's so prominent in, in a lot of your work in terms of shapes, angles, lines, um, but um, just in particular here, it's, you're, you seem to be drawing in space. Do you, do you feel that way? Do you feel like that's something uh, that you're doing or is, do you approach it in, in a different manner? Oh yeah, totally, totally. Um, so I'm not, I'm not super confident about the way that I draw. Um, so, so like, you know, when I was doing woodcuts, I think the thing that I really liked about, well, one of the things I really liked about them is that um, once I started carving uh, on the board, I really had to commit to um, the, the lines and the marks that I was making, because I can sort of control it. Um, but sometimes there's voids in the wood. A lot of times I'll work with, you know, you know, plywood that maybe wasn't the best for woodcuts and they'll be voids or, you know, the grain changes depending on how deep you cut. And I'd want the line to go, you know, this way and it would go the other way. Um, but that was one of the things that I really dug about it because I just had to work with what was there. And I think it's part of that whole, um, you know, working with whatever materials I have at hand and uh, working within for the, those boundaries and, and some limitations. Um, once I make a mark on a woodcut, I can't undo it. It's done. So I got to figure out how to make it work. Um, and with, with the metal pieces, I think it's the same kind of thing. You know, the, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to, uh, to my, my metal area here. But um, with those pieces, I use, what I'm using to make them is welding rod. Um, and um, I have a bunch of welding rod. It's here. I use it to make, you know, bases for tables or, or whatever. And uh, I can start to take, you know, these pieces and, uh, you know, cut them and start to create shapes. And I, and I really, I guess, like that, you know, I, I can manipulate it somewhat um, and I can make curves with them but I don't have total control. I just kind of have, have to work with whatever the material will allow. Uh, I'll start, you know, like, and, and I like to work in, in pattern and repetition, you know, so the first thing I do is I like prep, you know, lots of pieces of, these are all pieces that I made and I, and I tend to make just the same shape over and over again, a lot of times and then I compose with them, but I'll take this and then these, you know, I'll, I'll sort of put them together you know, and start welding and then you know I'll make that and uh, it's it's a little challenging because the rod isn't meant to be welded together they're very they're, they're pretty um, uh, small in diameter mm -hmm. so it takes a little you know you have to sort of be patient um, but I'll start making shapes you know for those I make triangles and then I'll take those shapes and often I'm trying to create something that uh this isn't necessarily flat, you know, I'll sort of, I'll skew them a little bit and start to make patterns, you know, with the original shape. Uh, and then they just kind of, you know, I just respond to a lot of times what's going on with me personally or whatever is happening in my life. And I start to compose a piece. These, um, these are rectangles, right? And, uh, I like certain numbers too, like these are sixes and nines. And then, you know, like that, I'll just start putting them together and that sort of becomes kind of hard to see, like this thing. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I wish I could show it to you a little I better, but that's the one in the photo. Yeah, 
Yeah, let me share the photo too so people can take a look at that. And I think yeah. um, what's what I really love to hear is um, is when you're playing around with these patterns, um, you do like what you end up with um, is something that feels very planned. So it's interesting to me that it kind of starts out with a sense of play. Um, but do you do you find that you make things with the intention of it hanging on a wall or standing on a pedestal or hanging from the ceiling or does the piece kind of want its finish dictate the presentation man that's a great question i think with the 3d pieces um with the 3d pieces uh once i start putting them together and they start to you know you know, sort of, sort of fill out and use more space. As I'm working on them, I'm turning them, you know, and sometimes, and it's really intuitive, you know, I just kind of am responding to really what feels good. Um, and as I, as I work on it and as I turn them around, I see, especially like with that one, where um, I'm standing in front of, in front of that piece right now in my shop, yeah, you see, so. I realize that if I just kind of like if I turn it, it like it becomes like a bunch of different pieces, um, and and they almost like it's like I can almost I can I'm almost responding to the way they sound when I'm making them. Like sound is a big part of it for me. Um, I'm always listening to something when I'm working and uh, and. Uh, you know, the patterns that are in music, it seems like I'll often try to translate those into the piece. Um, so like a drum pattern might be more like the other piece to me, um, a little bit more angular and um, the melody for me, you know, translates into more something like, like, like this piece here. Uh, and you know, and that it moves around, and I can also I can actually make sound if I you know touch them and I hit them mm -hmm. sometimes. It's really a bonus for me. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I have a plan in terms of I'll, I'll organize myself like a like I'll cut certain measurements and certain numbers of pieces, and I'll lay all of that out before I start working, and then I'll have an idea of the basic shape that I want to work with, which is usually a, a triangle, a hexagon. A rectangular or a square and then from there I'll just kind of you know I'll just kind of let it go and see what happens at that point. So earlier you know you mentioned that you started off in photography and I think when we were talking about um, uh, this with the kids at, at the earlier session for the talk for kids um, you mentioned doing photography and did I hear correctly that you did like a you were doing like concert photography? Yeah yeah so well, yeah. uh, so I did, I did a lot of photography in the early 90s uh, of hip hop. You know, I shot lots of sort of like, I think a lot of people think of that as the golden era in hip hop music. So I shot tons of that um, and I got to go a lot of shows and, you know, and it was, it was a really interesting time. It was a creative time, um, you know, then. I mean, in terms of hip hop music, nobody was really getting rich, you know, and nobody was making any money. So it was a different kind of thing. It was political. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very drawn to that. Um, but I shot, you know, I, I, I shot lots of different shows here. And uh, I got to work for some music magazines too. So I shot shows here and in New York. And, and uh, eventually somehow that, um, I can't remember how it happened, but somehow I developed a connection with the Cooper Hewitt, um, the Design and Architecture Museum. Uh, and so I did a lot of work for them. Uh, I worked for them for about five or six years uh, in the late yeah. 90s. And I just, think that's how, you know, I, I, I got to see some of this work too, yeah. because through that, we got to go into people's studios, the museum, you know, could get into lots of different artist studios. So I got, I was inspired by a lot of the work that I saw in those places. Yeah, it just strikes me as interesting that you um, were engaged with music, with photography in a way that I think when you think about engaging with music, with photography, 
taking images of musicians it's like that that feels like like a like a really huge uh segment and niche of photography that it 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 feels very applicable to capturing the moment when music is played in the in the those live events but it's interesting and now how music has entered the studio space for you which is a totally different form of engagement and how that's influencing a totally different set of materials uh <laughs> that you're you're still finding ways to you know like listen to the material it's really interesting that that's kind of appeared in both in both ways. Have you ever thought about that? Oh man, I, I don't know if I if I ever thought about it that way, but you're totally right. It's totally there. I mean, the 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 the, the music was always a big part of it for me, and and then you know, like in, with the photography stuff, like there was so much energy, and uh, like you know, a lot of those shows, there was just a lot of energy, and just I don't know, it felt really good. The music, I think maybe. I, maybe I wanted to be a musician, but I could never get my ADHD sort of, <laughs> you know, in, in check. And I couldn't, you know, bother with learning an instrument. But um, now, you know, like when I look at the pieces that I work on, they, they seem like almost like musical compositions to me. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, like I could, let me see, there's one I'm looking at, like, like this. They almost seem like, you know, like I can hear the different notes playing, you know, as you sort of move around on the piece. Yeah, um, I think if, even if you flipped it horizontally totally. and thought about those as positions on, uh, you know, in music notation, uh, you know, even on a score like that, that I can see how, how it reads that way, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's there, you know, I need to, I need to, you know, it's all, it's, the music part is always happening and it, and it defines a lot of times what the pieces end up looking like um, for me. So, yeah, let me see. Well, I mean, I, I like, like some of these other pieces, you know, like I really like the way that, like with the wire pieces, um, like the sense of like unfolding, like mm. I feel like I'm unfolding sort of a shape and I get mm -hmm. to see inside it. Um, That's so how I, I, I think about that as well. Yeah, I thought about that too with this piece here. Let me get back to the image um, for just a second. Um, this one right here, where it just feels like you've got this box and you're like, I think about the like origami and how you can just unfold each plain so easily with paper um so it's it's really fun to think about that with this very hard uh, material <laughs> totally yeah no this one i did this a while ago and uh yeah this one was really you know like i said you know like i you know i've always struggled with like attention stuff and you know i, I went to see therapists and they were like well you got to try some different you know medications so i tried some stuff and then um they uh on the fold out like they make a little like uh like that little molecular kind of diagram mm, mm -hmm. of you know whatever that substance is mm. and this is that like for oh, interesting. Paper, <laughs> this is that and then you know and i guess a lot of it is also like again it's repetition you know i like to mm -hmm. cut out the same shape over and over again and i'll start to compose it but in this one in particular i was trying to recreate that mm -hmm. little shape um, that makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. think it's it's interesting, like looking at your work, thinking about yeah, how math true. math plays yeah. such an important role, but that that in its essence is is present in so much of the world. You know, it's present in nature and and composition of things. It's present um, in music. Um, so you know, this idea of like almost fractals. You know, it's yeah, it, yeah. It, it, I think, you know, when you think about form and you think about shape and pattern, like all of that, um, I think it's easy yeah, to totally. connect to your work for that reason, because it's so prevalent, um, prevalent in everything. So um, that, that, that piece, that wooden, that one there, the wooden diamond piece, um, that's, oh. um, that's a, a, a Japanese uh, a joinery method uh, called Kamiko. And mm. uh, that took a really long time, but I, I, I was looking up, I've done a few jobs for the, the Japanese Embassy's Cultural Center. And uh, before, you know, COVID happened, they were doing a show about joinery. 
And uh, uh, they were like, well, you know, do you think you can contribute a piece that shows Kamiko? Mm. And, all, uh, and so I made this piece. So um, essentially they all, they all fit together like a puzzle. They all interlock. Um, so for each, for each, um, and I think you have it there, right? I have it here. This it's well, the piece is up. If it's up here on the wall, mm. uh, so it's about I think four, four feet or so. Um, but for each piece that locks, uh, you have to cut slots. This is oh, a wow. small, sort of a, a smaller version of it. So you have to cut slots, and eventually. Um, I can't do it and hold the phone. Right, right. But eventually, see, they lock together. Like a very much, a much more intense version of those like paper, like or yeah. foam airplanes. <laughs> I used yeah, to it, as took, a kid. It, took, it took forever. It took forever, but I, for me, you know, that kind of work and, um, kind of works for me. Yeah, it's again, very methodical. I uh, yeah, I, I, I wish I could say that I understood the math or the geometry. I have no clue. I have no clue. I can, I can just, you know, I can figure out how to make the pieces work together and I can figure out how to make some, you know, do some simple math and make the pieces. Well, we can call it experiential knowledge of math rather totally, than. Totally, totally. That's, that's know, totally where I'm at. It, it's in all the pieces, you know, like in the donuts, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's 12 rings of 12 and there's, I think, seven and a half degree angles to make the 360 work. Um, and I made 12 of those. So that's a lot of pieces, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, since we're, um, approaching, uh, 530, um, I just want to, again, say if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or say something, but, um, what people are thinking about that, um, with your studio, you kind of like opened up just a little bit before COVID. Um, and I know there were some plans in the works, um, for classes. So in, it, you know, whenever we sort of get back to the normal life, uh, how could people engage with your studio and, and, and how can people see your work or, or um, get to know a little bit more about you? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, uh, uh, the, our shop is called Material Things and uh, we, we were already, we were already having some ceramics classes before COVID and I was uh, planning to do uh, welding and uh, basic woodworking classes and they were already posted and actually sold um, but you know then COVID shut us down um, uh, our website is material things boh back of house uh, just added it in the chat so thank you thank you and then uh, <laughs> that's where we're posting you know our, our class schedule and uh, we have lots of different you know things going around going on here in the shop um, like I said there's some ceramics work happening here um, and, you know, we're just trying to figure out good ways to integrate into, you know, the, the community here. We have a CSA pick up people come here and pick up vegetables every Tuesday. Uh, we also have a friend who's a baker who uh, people come here and pick up, you know, bread that gets baked, you know, five minutes from here at his house. Nice. Um, um, so there's lots of different things, but material things, uh, B-O-H, uh, uh, dot com is you know where we post uh, our classes and any kind of events that we have going on. Oh, I think I I put the wrong. Oh, I'm so sorry. I think a different studio. We're gonna ignore that one. <laughs> Don't hey. go to their studio. Go to this. Oh, one. there you go. That's it. That looks right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Well, um, somebody did ask, um, they asked also like, where can we see your work online? But they also said, what is inspiring you right now? Man, I mean, I mean, I think right now it's just <laughs> inspiring. I mean, lots, lots of stuff is inspiring um, all the time. Um, I think right now it's just, you know, the sense of, you know, I don't know what's going on from one day to the next. It's a lot of chaos. And uh, at least it feels that way to me. And uh, I think some of this work is just, you know, trying to, you know, create some order out of, out of chaos. Um, I, I, I'm lucky enough, but uh, right, if you go out the back door of our shop, right there, the train, the CSX trains, um, run like 20 feet, well, not 20 feet, there's like a hill, about oh, 50 feet from our door. And, uh, I can sit here in my shop and, um, like I look like way over there at those windows and I can see CSX trains going by mm -hmm. because it's elevated there. And uh, I like looking at the graffiti. So I can sit there and I can look at the graffiti and uh, 
and I find that very inspiring. I think, I, especially, I guess, the more geometric looking pieces. Right. Um, it feels like a, like a, you know, those old cranky shows where it's like pictures and they run them on a, like a scroll that runs past you. Like, it feels like you've got yeah. your own little like cranky show of graffiti going on past those windows. Totally, totally. And it's, and it's perfect. It's like the wind, like when I sit in my wood shop and where the windows are, it looks like I'm just watching a screen. And you know, the trains go by here, you know, 10 times a day. Um, so I find that inspiring. Someone also asked, um, what is your favorite slash most useful woodworking tool? Oh man, wow, oh, I can, I can show. Well, I really like the lathe. I, I, like, I like turning. Um, it's kind of therapeutic um, and I, I love it, I love it. I can get in the zone and it's like the perfect balance of terrifying and zen. Um, terrifying so, like you're gonna like cut cut your finger off kind of terrifying <laughs> well you, well you know you get catches you know like depending on what's going on with the wood or your technique sometimes you can get a catch uh and it can it can startle you but probably one of my favorites let's see i'm trying to here it is is this little this is like one of my fanciest too that's also little, just really pretty <laughs> it's beautiful yeah it's a beautiful object it's a it's a block plane and uh i can't say i use it as much as I'd like to say I do, but every now and then I use it and I love it. And it's for just cleaning up corners. Oh, but I just like the way it feels. You mm. know, I like, I like when I get to pull it out and use it, it's really a finishing tool. It mm. feels like the treat. Um, but that, you know, that and probably the lathe. The lathe is kind of, you know, like this thing gets going pretty fast. You know, when, when I'm working on a piece, you know, I'm turning it, you know, 1300. RPMs and you just kind of have to really everything else has to stop um, and I have to focus on what I'm doing and I enjoy that I enjoy welding for the same reason too everything else right. has to stop and I have to focus on and the it. danger <laughs> I think yeah it's crazy it's, it's a little yeah a lot of this stuff is kind of it's, it's like, you know there's danger and everything but it it's it's a little scary but it's so rewarding right Once you know, it you just, just reminds me of it. like when you're doing something and your mom's like, thank we all, like, be careful. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and you're like, no, I've been yeah, there. but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I've, I've been there and I've had some run-ins too. So I've, I've had a chance to, you know, kind of learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's also what keeps me engaged with it because there's always, there's so much to learn. There's always more to learn with woodworking about the materials, about the tools, about the wood, you know, it doesn't do what you want it to do. It kind of fights you along the way. So you have to, you have to adjust and adapt. And so I like that part of it too. Just, it's yeah. always about learning. So one last question. Um, yeah. Someone says you have a big new studio. It seems like in your work, you set up certain challenges for yourself, like in the Japanese grid piece. Is this an approach you use? Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't get into that. I didn't. Sorry. Okay. So um, it seems like in your work, you set up certain challenges for yourself, like in the Japanese grid piece is this an approach that you use uh to challenge myself or like you know you learning new techniques i'm, I'm not sure I, I understand i i interpret it to mean that you that you are like oh i'm gonna try this this new thing and it's it's i'm gonna have to work it out definitely definitely i love i have to be really careful you know because there's so much to learn mm -hmm. but i love the challenge of learning a new technique you know like with the kamiko piece uh, I knew very little about it. I was aware of it, um, but I, I definitely didn't, you know, know it, understand it uh, very well. So yeah, definitely, you know, learning new new techniques, um, and you know, learning how to use new tools. I'm definitely drawn to that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I said, there's just so much to learn, um, and you know, like when I'm learning a new technique, it can also be very motivating. Uh, because, you know, I'm, I'm into, I think this goes back to something we were talking about earlier, but I really, I'm into coming into my shop and just starting to make work. Um, so I'll set up my tools and I'll set up my materials, but I'm not, I don't, I don't do a whole ton of planning, mm -hmm. you know, so if I need to learn a new technique, it's exciting for me to be able to come into my shop and use some new tools and, and I can really get into it, you know, and eventually something cool usually happens. Awesome. 
Well, yeah, thank you good. so much for, for um, participating and answering these questions. And thank you everyone for um, joining us today.